In this lesson, we will draw electric field lines for some continuous charge distribution. Let's start with a long line of charge with positive charges uniformly distributed throughout the entire line. Let's say this is a line of uniformly distributed positive charge. By symmetry, the field line would come out perpendicular to the line of charge near the center. On the top, it will go straight up, on the bottom, straight down, and over here would be like that. Now, if this line of charge is very long, much longer than this line, then it is like this section here is in the middle. So the electric field lines would be perpendicular to the line of charge. And if you look edge on, you can see that the lines would spread out in this circular fashion. When you are closing, the lines spread out onto a small circle. When you are farther out, the lines spread out onto a larger circle. So the density of the lines here would be like the number of, total number of lines divided by the circumference of a circle. So if the line is very long, the electric field lines will be like this, perpendicular to the line of charge. And the strength of the field is proportional to the density of the lines. And the density is proportional to the number of lines divided by the circumference of a circle, which is 2 pi r. That means the electric field is proportional to 1 over r. And that means at twice the distance away, the strength of the field will be halved. What if we have a large sheet of charge? like this. Suppose this is a uniformly charged plate with negative charges. By symmetry, the field lines would go into the plate perpendicular to the plate in the middle. On the top, it would go straight down, here straight up. And in between, the lines would go like this, curved. But if this happens to be part of a very large sheet of charge, much larger than this, then it's like this is in the middle. So the electric field lines should be perpendicular to this plate. And if you look edge on, you can see that the lines are all parallel with each other. The lines do not spread out at all. Of course, in reality, we don't have very large sheets of charge. They actually are often small charged plates. However, if we stay very close to the plate, so the size of the plate is much bigger than the distance, and we stay near the center of the plate and avoid the edges. It can be reasonable for us to say that the field is the same whether it is 1 millimeter or 10 millimeters away from the plate. Because the field lines are all parallel to each other, no spreading out. The field line density is the same here and here. The electric field at point 1 equals to the electric field at point 2. The electric field is the same everywhere on this side. So an infinitely large, uniformly charged sheet can give us a uniform electric field. What if we have a pair of parallel plates with equal amount of negative charges? See if you can draw field lines for this charge distribution. Um, in this region, the field lines go to the right because we got negative charges and negative charges to the right of this region. On this side, we get field lines going to the left because we got negative charges, negative charges to the left of this region. But what about this region in between? Let's look at this point in between the two plates. The field produced by the plate on the left goes into the negative charge to the left. The field produced by the plate on the right goes into the negative charge to the right. This point is closer to the left plate. So which of these two fields is stronger? They are the same because the electric field produced by a large sheet of charge is uniform. 
Closer does not make the field stronger. So these two, they have the same strength, even though this point is closer to the sheet on the left side. So these two fields, they cancel and leaving us with a zero electric field in between the two plates. What about the pair of parallel plates that are uniformly charged to the same amount but opposite charges? In between the plates, we get the electric field going to the left, out of positive into the negative charge. Since all these lines are parallel to each other, no spreading out, that means uh, in this region, we get uniform electric field. What about out here and there? Let's look at this point. There are two sheets of charge producing electric field over here. The field produced by the negative sheet of charge goes into the negative sheet. The field produced by the positive sheet goes out of the positive which of these two fields is stronger? They have equal strength, even though this location is closer to the negatively charged sheet. Because for a large sheet of charge, the field is uniform, the field strength has nothing to do with the distance to the sheet. So even though this one is closer to the negatively charged sheet, the field strength is the same for both. This means these two fields, they cancel, therefore the electric field out here is zero. For the same reason, the electric field on this side is also zero. We get zero electric field out here and the uniform electric field in between. Out of all these charge distributions, this is the one that is the most practical and useful. When we need uniform electric field, we charge up a set of parallel plates like these. We will be seeing them a lot in this course. One thing to remember is that in reality, these plates are actually pretty small. So there is what we call edge effect or fringe effect. The field lines are curved like these near the edges. However, the fringing of the field lines can often be ignored, especially if the plate separation is small compared to the size of the plates.